and uh, let's let's create something more realistic. So let's go ahead and uh, do it the old-fashioned way, real fast. Hyper texture, and let's uh, disable in or enable indirect lighting. You see how it's all grayed out right there. Uh, enable that, and you'll get all that nice good lighting you want. And let's go ahead and edit the function and add our own noise here. Fractal noise, by the way. And let's go ahead and use fast Perlin fractal. And let's raise the gain to 10 and lower the largest feature. All right. See how we're starting to get some chunks taken out right there? That's awesome. And let's raise the sharpness a little bit. Not sharpness, roughness, sorry. Raise the roughness. And let's click OK. And let's uh, lower, or let's use the distance field here. And let's lower the density. Or raise the density, my bad. And let's higher, or let's raise the field depth, if I can talk. Oof. All right. A little bit more. And now we can lower the density. I get something a little bit more interesting here. All right, now we've created a nice little rock. And uh, in order to make it look better here, let's go ahead and squish it. And let's flip it. All right, so there's our rock. You know what? Let's squish it a little bit more that way. There we go. And now let's raise the scale of it. So we get a little bit more fine detail in there like that. So there's our rock. Looks like a pretty normal boulder. Let's go ahead and roll, uh, do a fine little preview here. And yep, that looks about right. So what happens if we do it the old-fashioned way, like that? But then we want to create a hyper blob out of it. Uh, we can just basically do the same thing you did before. Just right-click on that. Now it's a hyper blob, and now it's completely different. Oh my God, what did it do? Uh, well, what it did is it uh, applied smoothing, so let's go ahead and take the smooth off. And also, the maximum resolution right here is set at 100, which isn't too high, uh, but it's good for preview purposes. But I want to do a little bit more than that, it's about 160, and that'll give us a little bit more quality. Uh, you won't be able to notice directly on here, but you will in the in the render. And let's go ahead and go back to here and. Let's load up a filter. Uh, you can custom create your own filters, but I'm going to load one up here. Let's use the Young Mountain. And, you know, that's looking like an outrageous rock, too. Uh, or the, nah, let's raise the density. There we go. That looks more like a boulder. And let's put a material on there. Um, the best way to do that is to actually, when you're in the default right here, Go ahead and click on Hypertexture Material, and then uh, Load a Material right here. And then let's choose a cool looking one. Let's try one that comes with View, that way you guys don't think that you have to use these certain ones. Uh, let's go to Rocks, and let's use, you know what, let's use Green Brown Rock. Alright. And Materials also come with their own Bump Maps or bumps right here. Uh, what you want to do is if you want to get all the texture you want from the, um, the hyper texture, go ahead and just lower the bump to this, the bump depth, uh, to something a little less than what it's set at, unless it doesn't have a lot to begin with, like this one didn't have a lot anyways. So you can probably keep that at a high level and be pretty, f pretty good. Uh, I'm just gonna do that. There we go. Alright, and now we'll do a preview. All right, and that is our rock, and I think it's a little bit too bumpy for us. It's coming out pretty jagged and pretty obscure still. So let's go ahead and uh, go back to the function editor and view. You have to go back and forth a lot, so please bear in mind while we are going back and forth, changing things. And uh, let's uh, now that looks pretty good. And also inside the volumetric settings. Uh, if you, this doesn't look good to you, you need a little bit more detail, go ahead and raise the quality boost. Uh, this does take a, a lot longer to render out if you raise this to a high level. 
Uh, you, of course, in view, you sacrifice a lot of stuff when you or render time when you raise the quality. So of course that's that's basic. And as I was saying with the bumps, if you want all the natural um, uh, fine little details from the hyper texture, go ahead and lower this. Uh, you don't want if you don't want these bumps to show up and either take away from the hyper texture, lower the bump. If you want to add that to it, then raise it. And also you might want to raise the maximum resolution here if it doesn't look good enough for you and it didn't look good enough for me so I'm going to raise it to 220 and this will make it a little bit longer to render especially at final quality renders uh, preview renders are pretty quick it's just that it'll take a lot longer for it to load up at first uh, it looks like Vue did it actually pretty quickly that time and as you can see here much better detail I believe the roughness could be taken down slightly more, but this is okay. Um, a lot better than I thought than before. And you know, this is how you can use view in real life situations. If you're trying to make a realistic looking boulder, this is a good way to do it. Um, and then fast perlin is really cool because it actually comes with nice little crack areas like this, um, and you can create some really nice rocks with it. So it looks like we have a lot more underneath that we can look at so let's go ahead and raise that and take a look at it and this is the entire rock and if you look here this is the mesh of the rock before or of the primitive and this right here will be the actual effect of the hyper blob um, this is actually the barrier right here would actually be with a field depth right here if you take this down and anything that extrudes out of here, it'll start rounding off to the original shape. If it stays inside of here, who knows what you can come up with. Um, so look at this as kind of like a barrier for the field depth. If you're hitting any sides of it, it's going to come out as the shape, as the shape. It's the easiest way to look at it. Click OK, and let's see this boulder we have. A bulbous boulder. Kind of looks like a, I don't know, like a lemon. Kind of looks like a deranged lemon. All right, and you can also see that you have fine details everywhere around the rock, not just where you see. So um, uh, let's go ahead and uh, keep that as it is. I kind of like that. We can add more detail to it with obviously more fractals added to it and for finer details. Uh, but for time's sake, let's just keep it like that. And I'm going to lower it back into the ground here, like so. And uh, let's see here. What else could we do? Um, let's go ahead and uh, add some plants. We're going to add any plant you want, really. And we're not going to do it that way. Let's go to Hyperblob. And let's add them to the Hyperblob here. You won't be able to add it to the default material right here. You will have to add it to that. But I actually don't like this material. It's too much like the default material. So I'm going to go and change it. So let's see here. We got. Let's change it to this one. Looks like a nice little desert rock, but who knows? Lower the bump. I don't want that much bump detail on there. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, that looks good. Okay, and let's all go ahead and uh, add an ecosystem. And here, let's go and add a plant. And let's add just some nice looking grass, prairie grass stuff. Uh, you can add any plant you want. I'm just using whatever was available at the time. We'll take a minute to load in there. Uh, hyper t hyper blobs do take a lot of load on, has a lot of load on your system. You can already see all the polygons I have here. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, populate it. Let's first change the density to see what we're dealing with here. And we'll populate it. I probably should have uh, changed the range here. So let's, uh, I don't want it to go towards the bottom. So let's go more towards the top here. All right. And let's change the density now that I know that the plant size is semi decent. And a 
little bit more. I kind of want it to be covered. And, you know, you can probably change these a little bit smaller. Change the density a little more. 85. 392 instances should be good enough. Covering the rock, but not too much. Alright, let's go ahead and load up a preview. I'm going to zoom into it actually right here. And let's load up a preview. Alright, probably didn't choose the best plant to place on here. It grows in patches, so that's okay. And you can see here that you can actually um, populate it with plants as well. And then a very important thing to take notice uh, when doing hyperblobs is this is all inside a general shape right here, like I said. So um, view calculates where to place the plants on the object inside the effect of the hyperblob. But if you go into a if you go into the uh, this environment render again, actually on here, somewhere on here. Where is it? Sorry. It's on here somewhere. Oh. Um, maybe for hyperblobs, they might have changed it inside view 9. But I know before, um, you had to check move ecosystem instances. It looks like it's checked here by default um, with displacement mapping. Um, but if you're using metablobs, and you wanted the plants to be um, populated on top of the uh, the effective area you had to check move ecosystem instances and it, that view would calculate where to place those plants on top of the um, object itself um, otherwise it would populate on this mesh in areas where you wouldn't want it to populate um, or if you would do its best to populate in where you think you might want to put it uh, but most likely it wouldn't go there. So um, I guess you don't have to worry about that in view 9, but in view 8, if you're using hyper uh, volumetric materials and hyper textures, you might want to make sure that's checked. Uh, but if not, don't worry about it in view 9. All right. So you can populate it with uh, ecosystem instances. Uh, you can also um, add anything else you want to it, like more. Um, you can go back here and you can add. Um, more functions to it to create a more realistic looking rock and one of the best things about hyperblobs is just like almost anything else in view 9 you can change the mapping mode to it and you know this is kinda of like a big thing um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete the ecosystem instances and this is actually a very important thing to look at um, this entire tutorial I didn't move this very much so I wasn't able to show you um, but if you actually take the mapping mode it will most likely be set the object parametric by default and uh, you know I created this entire uh, tutorial based on world standard and that's why I want to show you um, most things it's, it's checked the object parametric you move the object it stays static doesn't move doesn't change at all when you move when you change the world standard um, view calculates it as kind of as there's a backdrop to it kind of and it'll move around based on different um, applications that you've used like the function editor and things like that so if I actually let me go ahead and uh, zoom out here slightly and if I pick up and move this mesh even slightly to the left here view should calculate it differently and it might not work for uh, metablobs or not metablobs but hyperblobs so uh, let me go ahead and show you what I mean um, in terms of changing shapes